Uh, course schedule, uh, 207. There are a total of n courses you have to take, labeled from 0 to n minus 1. Some courses may have prerequisites. For example, to take course 0, you have to first you have to first take course 1, which ex expresses a pair, 0, 1. Given the total number of courses and a list of prerequisite pairs, is it possible for you to finish all courses? Um, so without reading the example, um, uh, uh, I mean, I feel a little bad that I picked a, a graph theory problem back to back. Uh, I mean, as you kind of, uh, yeah, I mean, the way they, yeah, it, it's way creative, uh, uh, a graph problem, and it's, uh, uh, what was it called? It's um, it's a, a topological sort uh, that uh, basically you're trying to uh, sort this schedule by uh, you know the uh, by by taking off uh, uh, something that it, you don't have to take uh, or by taking off the the basically the leaves uh, uh, of the in graph uh, or I'm kind of mumbling a little bit, uh, but basically, uh, there's just a top topological sort, uh, and uh, you could do some. Uh, the idea is that, uh, and this is actually, I mean, it's a medium difficulty, but it is a very standard uh, uh, graph theory problem with, uh, in algorithm course. Uh, this is actually like they would probably use this exact word and give or take uh, uh, as like. The canonical uh, uh, example for topological sort, actually, even uh, either this or like some kind of you know requirement DAG thing. Uh, so yeah, so it seems pretty straightforward. So uh, is it possible for you to finish all the courses? Uh, and um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. And actually, this is to be honest, uh, I maybe spoke a little bit too hastily. Uh, you don't even need to necessarily topologically sort this, maybe. Um, do you need to? Because I think maybe it's okay to see if there's a, a cycle in the graph. Um, yeah, because hmm. Cause if you're given a graph, as long as you have no cycles, um, Maybe I mean then you can complete, uh, uh, then you could complete all your courses. So actually, this is even slightly easier than a topological sort. So to that would definitely give you the answer. Uh, I, I would actually do some. Uh, yeah, I mean I, I think you just need to do a depth for search uh, for cycle finding, and you could do that in read for C time. Uh, yeah, so you could do that in read for C time. Uh, so the, the little tricky thing that we have to consider is that uh, you're given an adjacency uh, edge, was it, no, was it adjacency list, not adjacency matrix, uh, and that leads to different type of complexity for that first search. It's actually uh, uh, depending on who you ask. Um, hmm. No, they don't give you n, uh, but it's actually it allows your depth first search to be even more. Well, it's not. Sorry. Uh, they don't actually give you an adjacency list per se. They give you a list of edges, which is relatively trivial to uh, convert into an adjacency list. And that allows you to get that uh, magical um, we plus ye, yeah, we plus ye, uh, time for depth of search instead of some uh, we square. Because if you do depth of search with adjacency matrix, then it's kind of we square, even though you have, um, even though it's technically linear. Uh, I mean, it's technically linear, but it ends up being re square because you have to like check all the uh, other vertex for each, uh, uh, um, you know, each of the visited things. So, so yeah. So I think, yeah. So this is essentially cycle finding. Or, uh, so we can kind of get started right away, uh, and with the uh, and the first thing we have to do is pre-process an adjacency list. So let's. Get that started. Um, okay, uh, number of courses. Let me take a quick look to make sure the input. Uh, yeah, okay.
So we want a list of lists. Okay, fine. Okay. And we have many typos. <laughs> and maybe I'll just abbreviate this just for typing sake. Uh, sorry, sometimes I get confused about different languages. Um, okay. Yeah, for the Python hack, you know, Python viewers definitely t let me know if there's a easier way to do this. I, I think the last time I was trying to do something a little funky and fancy, and it ended up uh, 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 sharing pointers or something. So, so I, uh, so I, so I'm doing this a, a little kind of, yeah, <laughs> technically I guess I would need this, but um, okay, uh, and then now for. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I think th this should be su sufficient. Uh, try to think if there's some weird things, but okay. Uh, and this is the part where I kind of I'm trying to think right now, do you need to start at the leaves or the root? Uh, hmm, that's interesting actually. I'm also trying to think right now, maybe I could use union find to make this slightly easier for but eh, I don't know if I, I I'm convinced about that one. Uh but eh, hmm. maybe I should have just ontological sort. Eh, still not impossible, but Yeah, maybe I'm, I'm actually going to do this in topological sort because it still has the same one time v plus u if we do it correctly. So, uh, I'm always worried that I get the, uh, the ordering correct. So, so, take zero, you need to take one. So, one points to zero. Okay. And 
Okay. <clears throat> I always forget if there's a pop in Python. Let me just see. Yeah, okay. Oh, so I'll go. That maybe works. Oh. No. Okay. Also, that's just bad. Yeah, that's just bad. But uh, okay, cool. So now that we pop, um, uh, maybe I have to things set the wrong way. Actually. Um. Okay. Okay, so that should be mostly it. Uh, so the only thing you have to do is the psycho checking. Um, well, I mean, you have to make sure that you, um, you, you actually visited all of them. So actually, it's a number of course. Um, okay. Oops. Okay. Now let's see what silly mistake I made. Now, hmm. what is this? I it's very confusing. Hmm. Maybe lead code is having some issues, but okay. But but this should be true. So th this is wrong. Um, hmm. I'm not gonna lie, for these uh, uh, directed edge graphs uh, uh, or directed graphs, I always maybe have uh, uh, to always worry that I have them in the wrong order. Um, Hmm. 
So I'll just get part of it. I set up the. Did I set up the uh, edges correctly? Okay, so I don't set up the edges correctly. Oh, uh, I guess uh, I guess always mix them back and forth. Oops. Okay, so I mean at least this output makes sense. Uh, as I usually say uh, on these, is that um, you also have to make sure that you. you uh, uh, when when you have suspicions that your code is wrong, you have to make sure that that's also true. Uh, uh, meaning, because uh, especially in, in cases like this, uh, where the, the um, where the, the the output the possible output is only true or false, uh, sometimes uh, uh, if you're a little arrogant or you're cocky, which I have been known to be from time to time, you definitely get uh, you definitely accidentally uh, you know just. Eh, roughly, let's just say fifty percent of the time, you just get something that's uh, right by accident, uh, where you shouldn't, uh, uh, where you're like, oh, I fixed this bug and it's right because both the answers were true, but you know, but that's sometimes not sufficient, right? Because half the time you'll be right. Uh, so I, I think I would try to force myself to be, uh, uh, you know, do a more complicated case. Uh, I would actually probably test myself a little bit more. I, uh, but uh, but this kind of worked out. Uh, I think I would have maybe stress tested a little bit because uh, they don't tell you what n is. Um, so maybe I would have tried a bigger n, which eh, in this leak code interface is a little tricky to pick, choose a huge n. Uh, well, I mean you can choose a big huge n, but what edges? Uh, I think this. Um, yeah, as I said, I think this is slightly a little bit on the easier side, uh, or it's, it's tough to say because it's slightly on the easier side if you know topological sort, uh, which. It's almost like, hey, like for an interview problem, if, if it's like, hey, you, do you know into topological sort and can you implement it? Uh, since that is like a really, you know, uh, 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 then yeah, okay. But, but I don't know if I, like as, a, as an interviewer, I don't know if I would get that much value out of this per se. Uh, um, maybe I could look for a kind of coding style and kind of uh, considerations, but, but there, there's nobody that much thought process and like working through the problem because it's literally like hey if you know top topological sort then you know how to do this and if you don't then uh we may gonna you know you might have a rough time so and so for this i don't reason i don't really like it as an interview problem uh, at least not for an on-site i mean maybe for um like for a phone screen and you allocate maybe 20 to 30 minutes of the time for coding then maybe i would use this as a problem uh and maybe for someone on the more junior side even, but uh, eh, but overall it's okay. I mean, it's topological, so I don't know how much it is, how much more value you could add on a problem that is basically uh, a textbook problem and they even use the textbook example to, to do it, but no pun intended because it's called cross schedule, but, but yeah, so cool. Um, that's, I mean, uh, can recursive DFS be used for this? Um, yeah, I think so. I think the 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 thing that I um uh yeah, so if you had got a uh, question about can because of DFS be used for this, I think I, um earlier on I was actually thinking that could be enough for maybe kind of psycho checking. But I think the um uh yeah and and you could probably do it in re plus e time only because uh uh at most you would visit each edge once, which means uh, uh, you get V plus E time. I think the, the thing that, um, and you could definitely do it. Um, uh, I think the, 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 the reason why I didn't do it that way specifically was kind of finding the, uh, uh, the quote unquote, the roots or the leaves, whichever direction you want to go. Uh, I think the leaves kind of made, like which I have here by having uh, keeping a count and checking this. Um, so you could actually in in this way, I mean, if you kind of look at this part of the code, uh, it actually lends itself to a very uh, straightforward uh, uh, DFS solution because uh, you could just think of it instead of uh, uh, essentially using a queue, we're using um, 
uh, this, uh, uh, the implicit stack, right? Uh, and this problem, you could probably use the queue or the stack interchangeably uh, because for topological sort, it doesn't really necessarily matter which order you uh, uh, do things in as long as you kind of uh, um, uh, uh, keep track of what, what you have to DFS, which I think for DFS is a little tricky because you still have to keep uh, uh, like a, essentially a list of things you need to visit at some point. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like you don't need to know the topological order, so you could definitely do it, but you just have to kind of still keep track of like, hey, uh, uh, like for ex like I visited, um, like you can imagine like, um, like, like almost like a, a linked list or a linked list with like, uh, with a fork at the bottom where so like zero look at one or zero requires one, one requires two, two requires three and two requires four. So in that case, you could imagine, uh, so you're, you're, even with DFS, you would have to do the order three, uh, uh, yeah, three and four first. Um, uh, because you, so your DFS would essentially, um, yeah, you don't need the explicit stack, but you still need to keep track in some way because you would visit three first, Three, you then uh, uh, go to two, and then like, but two is not ready yet, so you have to do another. Uh, uh, you have to do node four first, uh, and and then go go. Uh, DFS will allow you to go to two and then one. Uh, but, so you have to keep track of uh, things a little bit more with the recursion. Um, and I mean, and you can maybe yeah, like you. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's more iteratively. I mean, you could. You could uh, uh, implement uh, iteration with uh, DFS uh, or like with a recursion, but um, but you still need a, a way to like kind of for every like for every iteration uh, 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 get the next number uh, to uh, to search, and that next number to search may not be one necessarily one of the edge that you are uh, your current node is rela. Uh, uh, decommending or maybe relaxing, depending on your mind. Uh, uh, like, like we have. have uh, I mean, in the the case I want to draw is, uh, let's say you have four and you have uh, zero, zero requires one, one requires two, and then two requires three, and then uh, two requires four, something like this, right? Um, so your recursion will, because if you want to get at the, you want to start the leaves first, uh, you, you start at three, and three would decrement two maybe, but then your depth will search for three, because uh, two still has a prerequisite. So maybe you could uh, go down the other way with like two going to four, and then do some math that way, uh, but then you would have to implement something in both directions, which is maybe a little tricky. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, it, that's like a almost, yeah, if you store the edges into a dictionary, then uh, it's almost essentially like you have a, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of like an adjacency matrix, but maybe um, like a sparse adjacency matrix. Uh, uh, so you're wanting to, uh, but if you do it that way, that uh, I think the problem with doing that it that way is that um, uh, it depends on how you, you construct the, the preprocessing, of course. Uh, but uh, so there are two ways to do it. One is kind of what I did here, with the preprocessing the edge into a adjacency list, uh, or except for that, instead of uh, a pen, you store it in a dictionary, uh, which maybe it's okay. Uh, but if you do it the other way, where you just have one big uh, adjacency matrix or, or one dictionary, where that is, uh, then you don't get that uh, benefit of uh, having an adjacency list uh, because you would have to iterate through every edge all the time. So then maybe it's possible that you end up being like doing V times E running time or something like that. Um, and I think there's some complication about like going up a graph and down a graph and stuff like that. I mean, I, it's definitely doable, which is for me, uh, 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 when I'm doing these problems, I'm always trying to do things the easiest way in terms of coding as possible. No, easiest after you know how to do it anyway, uh, uh, to because it's just there might be a lot of possible mistakes. But yeah, definitely, uh, definitely try it later. Uh, send me a message and, and we'll kind of review it maybe next week or something like that. I'm curious now. Uh, maybe I'm a little lazy, but I, I am still curious. So yeah, uh, definitely 